It's YouTube Wednesday. I had something else planned for this uh, for this episode, but I wanted to switch it up to help out a buddy who is making a two-piece mask mold, I think for the first time, and uh, so I'm just going to do a two-piece mask mold uh, this go-around. I won't get to pouring it up, but you will see the whole molding process. So, let's get started. First, you need a sculpt. I'm not going to talk too much about sculpting. A few things I want to point out. I always want my actor's eyes to be the eyes of the mask. I want it to have good breathing, uh, so you'll be have you know enough of the mouth open. I want it to have good hearing. This is the ear on the sculpt, and this is where I'll cut out the ear for the actor to hear, because they're in different places. We can talk about armatures. Um, it is no problem to sculpt a mask onto this style of wig head form. This is fine for sculpting on. Measure your head, add clay to make it bigger where you need to. And I'm going to make a pore spout because I'm building it in the positive so it will show up in the negative. Okay, which is basically kind of a diamond shape. Okay, that I'm pulling up into the back of the mask where I know I'm going to trim. But I want to have a pour spout because that will make my life easier down the road. Pour spout. This will be hollow. All right. This will be a bowl because I'm making a plaster bowl right now, two half bowl. When I strap it together, this will be a pour spout because where the clay is, nothing will be but latex. I'm going to fill it up, and then I can pour it out with the pour spout. I need to seal the sculpture. I'm going to seal the sculpture with any kind of like a Krylon Crystal Clear. You can use hairspray. Basically I'm spraying a thin layer of plastic on this that will help get the clay out of the mold later. Now you are going to lose a minuscule amount of detail in your sculpture because this is going to fill it in. So just like painting, you want to move quick back and forth you guys are haunters, I should not have to teach you how to spray paint. I'm going to mold this guy in Ultra Cal 30 later. There's plaster in the eyes, you can see that. Uh, Vaseline would work. Vaseline would work fine. There's also some plaster in the mouth that we can see. And I'm just hitting this. I said Vaseline will work and it does work great. So will Pam cooking spray. Don't get the butter flavor because that just makes you sick after a while. And then halfway through making a mask, I want popcorn. So don't get the butter scented or butter flavored. Just the regular Pam cooking spray. And it's a buck. You know, go to Dollar General. Uh, I'm also hitting the wooden base at the very bottom because plaster will stick to wood. If plaster run down, runs down there, it's not going to stick. Next thing I have to do is I have to make a clay wall. You need to make a clay wall that divides the sculpture in two. If I just had made a one piece mold, it would be very difficult to get the plaster head out and it would be very difficult to get the clay out. And by very difficult, I really mean impossible. In making the clay wall is divide the sculpt in half. Like halfway down, right there. I'm going to mold the back half first. So I'm going to set my clay wall up and I'm going to push it down on this side so that I can paint plaster on this side and it's supported. And then this will be dry. I can peel the clay wall off, lay this down, and then I can get into the detail of the face without it all running down and making possible air bubbles. I have a very basic set of sculpting tools. You're going to have a tool called a clay cutter. It's a piece of steel wire, two wooden hammers. One of the other things that you normally get, a metal pointy thing. 
This is what I normally cut my clay with for my clay walls. I want to cut all my clay walls ahead of time. I don't want to be in the middle of wall making and not have enough slabs of clay. I'm taking my clay cutter. I'm going to go down about three quarters of an inch, maybe an inch. That's how thick I want my slabs of clay. So now I can just peel this off and I have eh, three quarters of an inch to a one inch, very flat on one side piece of clay and cut another one. This clay is very soft and this clay cutter runs right through it. With my wire, I want to cut these down the middle long ways. That is going to be the thickness of my mold. Okay, the clay kind of comes in the perfect size to cut it in half and my wall is going to be about that thick off of the mask. Here's the mask head, here's the wall sticking up. I'm going to cut these in half, pretty much neatly. I'm not measuring because I just don't. I want you to see is how I'm putting these on. I have a couple of these pieces are a little bit thicker than the others and that just tells me they're going to be a good base. I want to keep this side of the wall as flat as possible. I also want to maintain a 90 degree angle with the surface of the sculpture. I don't want my wall to be angled this way or angled that way. I want it to be as straight as possible. One way that I make a clay wall and the way I line it up is I put, I hold this piece of clay behind my sculpture and then I trace out the outline just by resting. I'm holding my clay behind. It's actually well past where I want to, I want my wall to be here, but I'm holding it back here so it can disappear. I can then rest my tool on the clay sculpture and that traces a line where I can cut with my wire tool which gives me a pretty close setup of where I want that to be. Before I press it on I want to clean up this edge this edge is a little bit hairy, you see how it's not perfectly clean. Remember, I want that 90 degree. So I'm just going to use my thumb real quick. Clean that up. Okay. On the back side, I'm going to use my thumb. I'm going to push this down into the sculpt. By pushing it into the sculpt, I'm really reinforcing that wall. And that gives more surface area hanging on to the clay. Okay, holding it back. Simple trace line. Clean up the edge a bit with my finger. And now I'm squeezing it in order to make the clay go out further to get this line perfect. What happened was, right there, you can see that I have a gap in between my clay wall and my sculpture. Well, that won't do, but I just have to fill that gap with something, which would be clay. Using my thumb, fixing that seam. It's 
See how this wall overhangs because this one was cut? Just using my wire tool to straighten them up. Now there's very little evidence that I had to blend right there. I'm squeezing a little bit, pushing it forward. I can give it a tap from this side. I don't want my, my wall to go down and curve against the sculpture. I still want it straight. So if I do that by tapping, I've got to go back and clean that up with the wire. That should be my last cut. I kind of have a camera in the way of where I normally work, so this is a little sloppier than normal. But I'm not using anything special. This is water-based clay. You can get it at any ceramics store. If you need help finding it, email me. I'll help you find a ceramic place or a place that sells water-based clay near you. Same with plaster. All these little extra pieces that I cut off, I'm going to make these little triangle wedges and just put a few on the back end to help hold that wall up. So I'm about to be brushing up against this with plaster, and I want a little bit more support than what I've got. I need to put a few keys in there. Keys are a semi-circular depression on this part of the mold, which will correspond to a circle out depression. To make it, it helps use something that is semi-circular. These uh, little measuring cups are perfect, but you can use a spoon, you can use whatever, because I'm doing a depression, it's going to look just like that. There's going to be several of these little round things that stick out everywhere I put one. And basically, I'm just spinning it in here to pull out some clay. Doesn't have to be perfect, doesn't have to be huge. I used to do a gutter key which is one big key all the way around, but it always broke off. So it was kind of useless after the first or second pour. These have a longer lifespan. At this point, one more time, I'm gonna hit it with crystal clear, because I did two coats before, okay? I'm not worried about hitting the wall. The wall's pretty flat. It'll peel away easy. I'm also going to hit that wooden base again with Pam and the table. A mixing bucket. I'm putting about two and a half fingers of water into the bottom of it. And when I mix up plaster, there's a formula that you can use. You know, it's like however many parts to however many parts. Everybody will tell you how to make it the right way. <laughs> I will tell you how I make it. It may not be the right way, but it's fast. 
and it works for what I'm doing. Uh, I've never had my plaster come out weak or uh, delaminate or cause other problems. But right now I'm putting my clay back in the bag so I don't lose it. Alright, putting plaster on. I have about two and a half fingers of water in this bucket. This is what a good sized ice cream uh, bucket is. Get this from the grocery store. Um, and I eat all the ice cream and then I have a bucket. I'm using Ultra Cal 30 plaster. I've got just a big tub of plaster here that I am putting it in there with. Well, when most people say to stop is when you see cracked earth. You just you always add plaster to water, not water to plaster. And this is not riveting television, but when it looks, I mix it by food. Um, I might say peanut butter microwave for 30 seconds, you know, so it's a it's kind of sludgy. But normally, first application, pancake batter. This is not fully mixed, but you can see how runny it is. That is what I want. And I'm using my hand to get all the lumps out. That is very important to what I'm doing. You don't want any lumps, and you also don't want any air bubbles. Right now I'm taking the bucket of plaster to my floor. I'm bouncing it on the floor a few times. Bouncing the bucket of plaster on the floor brings all those bubbles to the surface and pops them. Chip brush. And I just want to get the sculpture covered. You can kind of see how it's separating a bit. That is because I use the gloss. Okay, use matte, that won't happen. I just gotta put it on a little bit thicker and it's gonna fight me a little bit. On the wall where I barely put any, it stays on pretty good. But that's the only problem I'm having. It's my fault and I knew it was coming so I'm prepared for it. And it's really not a big deal. This is the back of the head. If this were too thin, it would be running down the sculpture and running everywhere. And that's why I just like it a little bit thicker, especially for the back of the head. There's detail. It's going to capture the detail because I'm brushing it in. I'm not going to lose detail because my plaster's too thick. And it's the back of the head. If they're looking really good at the actor's back of his head, your actor's doing it wrong. When you're doing parts of the ears or any deep holes, you really want to push it in there to make sure that you just get good coverage with your plaster. Um, because air compresses to a certain extent, you can compress air into a hole and then it pushes the plaster out. So you get an air bubble. And where you want to be a nice deep crevice ends up not that deep because plaster didn't get there to make it in the mold. I'm going through and I'm filling in all of these, all my keys that I made that I carved in there with that little spoon, I'm just filling them in. And any dimples or cracks on the head, I want to fill in with plaster and get a nice smooth finish. And I'm kind of slabbing a good bit on and then pulling it with the brush. I don't want to pull too much or else I'm dragging plaster off. I want to keep a good amount on the brush and lift a little bit as I pull it up. Because I always want to add. I don't want to take any plaster off of this. So keep your brush good and wet. I'm basically hitting the bucket, blobbing it on. Hitting the bucket, blobbing it on. Okay, right now, I'm getting thicker plaster, alright? It's kicking as I go. I'm going to stop with the brush. That was great while it lasted. I'm now going to my hand. I'm going to put a lump on the base, and I'm making, I'm smearing it on. I'm not pushing very hard, 
I'm letting it flow out from in between my hand up against the sculpture, and as I run my hand up, it pulls out. That leaves me with a nice, thick coating. And I'm not pulling any off. That's the important part. When it comes to my walls, I can get a good bit in my hand and just use the wall to scrape it off. All right, then I use my finger to make sure there's no air bubble there as I blend those two together. Almost out of this batch, when I mix up my next batch, I'm just going to mix it thicker to begin with. I'm not going to wait for it to get this thick. I'm going to mix it thick. 